from Roland Emmerich, the director who brought you Independence Day, The Day After Tomorrow, Godzilla, and 2012, now brings you Shakespeare. What? 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen to this. Not a single manuscript or poem was ever found in William Shakespeare's own handwriting, not even a letter. And this from a man who is known to have divided his time between London and Stratford. Wouldn't that normally have produced a vast amount of correspondence? If you're away from home for so long, maybe a little note to his wife asking, how are the kids? The largest literary hunt in history produced not a single handwritten note of William Shakespeare. Strange, right? <laughs> William Shakespeare was born in the small town of Stratford-upon-Avon to illiterate parents. I have no problem with that. A lot of people come from tough beginnings and move on to great things. But what I find hard to explain is the fact that both of his daughters, Susanna and Judith, couldn't read or write either. Isn't it incredible that the writer of some of the greatest pieces of literature, the writer of King Lear, wouldn't want his children to read his plays or sonnets. Doesn't work for me. Will <coughs> Shakespeare of Stratford was not a member of the upper classes. Everybody agrees on that. Then why did he write so obsessively about the aristocracy, about kings and queens and the life at court? And more importantly, how was he so familiar with their ways? Just take a look at Ben Johnson, also a commoner. His plays pretty much reflect the perspective of the working man. With Shakespeare, it's just the opposite. He apparently mocks his peers by giving them silly names, like Bottom, Dull, or Mistress Overdone. Was Shakespeare a traitor to his own class? No way. Check this one out. The only handwriting we have of William Shakespeare are actually six shaky and inconsistent signatures, all on legal documents. It seems that the poor man had difficulties signing his own name. But let's compare him to his colleagues, Kit Marlowe, Francis Bacon, and Ben Johnson. I think true penmanship. Isn't it hard to believe that William Shakespeare had so little experience with a quill now, I believe writing comes from the heart. So I'm asking myself, why doesn't a single play or poem by William Shakespeare reflect the life of the man from Stratford? For example, Shakespeare pours his heart out in his sonnets, but never mentions the death of his 11-year-old son. On the other hand, Ben Johnson wrote a beautiful poem when his child died. Or think about Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn, or in our times, John Lennon wrote his song, Julia, about his mother. Call me a romantic, but I believe that great artists are inspired by their life, but obviously not the man from Stratford. <coughs> no records prove that Shakespeare ever attended the Stratford Grammar School, yet the work of William Shakespeare, the writer, shows extensive knowledge of medicine, astronomy, art, music, military, law, and philosophy, as well as aristocratic activities such as royal tennis and falconry. Call me a snob, but even if he was a genius, he couldn't have pulled that one off without leaving at least a trace of his learning. After all, William Shakespeare had the largest English vocabulary of any writer in history. Not quite grammar school level, I would say. Here is a big one for me. We know that William Shakespeare retired in his late 40s and returned to the same little town where he grew up. There, he never wrote a single poem, play, or sonnet again. I would never compare myself to Shakespeare, but for me, the idea of retiring from directing and moving back to my hometown 
and never to be associated with movies again is just completely unthinkable. So what happened? Did William Shakespeare run out of ideas? Hmm. No record shows that William Shakespeare of Stratford ever traveled beyond the borders of his home country, England. Yet Shakespeare's work references Italian cities in great detail, French court life, as well as etiquette and manners of the nobility in foreign lands. How did the author gain all this specific knowledge about countries he never visited? Let's remember, a third of William Shakespeare's plays are set in Italy. Must have watched the Travel Channel a lot. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Stratford Monument. It shows the man himself in all his glory, holding a quill and parchment. However, historians agree that there were renovations done on Shakespeare's image. Take a look. An early engravement of the same monument shows our poet holding a sack of grain rather than a writing tool. Interesting, don't you think? Can you believe that the last will of William Shakespeare of Stratford does not mention any books or manuscripts? Nothing that would indicate that he was the author of 36 plays, 154 sonnets and two famous poems. Didn't he care what would happen to his life's work after his death? In his testament, he obviously cared more for his second best bed that he famously left to his wife. Must have been a very comfortable mattress.